Good morning and welcome to Review with a Brew. This is Road Trip Edition, and at this point I'm now going to say Guten Abend. Uh, you didn't tell me we were going to Germany, Benjamin. We're not going to Germany, we're going to Ambleside. <laughs> well, of course, the randomness uh, ensues. Uh, well, exactly. Why Ambleside? Well, you've got the struggle, so we can test how it copes with going up really steep hills, because that goes up to Kirkston Pass. You can also do some of the surrounding roads as well. You can see what economy is like. There's a restaurant that looks like it's made out of like a log cabin type thing and it reminds me of Cuckoo This is the exclusive, it's in Westminster Silver. It's perfect for pigeon fanciers, model enthusiasts, mountain bikers. Or anybody who needs an estate car. And that's it, an estate car takes me back to things like Sierras, Montegos. So the fact that MG decided to reinvent them, I mean, yes, okay, it's based on the Roe, but essentially it's still an MG. It's going to be really nice to see the new design language. It is, but as we're not in Europe, and I'm going to blame it on that because I don't actually know the reason, that's why we don't get the facelift now or things like the Marvel R. No doubt they'll come sometime this year, but who knows when. Now what we'll do in true road trip style is take a cursory look around the car, check out the specs and the prices. Now there has been a price increase, but that's to be expected. I mean, let's face it, the grants have really thrown everybody into like pickled mindness. The range does start with the Excite and you can get that for 27945 so the starting price for this one is £30,445, and that's for an exclusive long range, and that includes the grant. But the biggest change of this one is you now have MG Pilot and a longer range. Although this is a smaller road trip, it's no less intense. We're going to be going on dual carriageways, motorways, steep roads, the lot. We're really going to be testing that long range. We've got keyless entry, so you just press and open. Nice wide opening, makes it easier to get in. But we don't have a grab handle above the driver's door. And there we go. Time for me to get behind the wheel. So we're gonna to have to be a little careful. I've got 21 miles of range. Eek. Yeah, eek a squeak. So it's time for a bit of eco driving. So as Annabelle mentioned, first stop. So is Burger Bear. We meet up with David. I'll just give you a bit of a base level. We've got the stereo on, but the sound's not up, but the side lights are on. We've got the aircon on on one and no heated seats. A lot of people have been waiting for this video. So we thought it only prudent to do at least a partial road trip. Busy much? What? Enjoy the way. This is the way. It's a Mandalorian picnic. Mandalorian picnic. <laughs> this is the way to snacks. Has not had much sleep. No, no, I have not, and I've not been fed yet. So. Right, <laughs> let's talk about the car for a bit. Let's have a look down the car. When you start it, it will be in, I think it's normal mode, in Curse 2. So if you want to economize, best bet, change the mode to Eco by pushing down on this, and then set your Curse to 3. Oh, that's 1, which means we'll coast more. If we're on three, then we should be able to adopt a style of, say, one pedal driving. So the range is now 20 miles. It's gone orange. And I'm assuming it goes to that. Then to wed. Yeah. Oh, look, electric. Mocker. Yes. The increase of electric vehicles around Silverdale. Yeah. We're seeing a lot more MGs. Loads of ZSs around here. Whereas there used to be none. Decent regen level. Very nippy. I was going to say the steering was quite sharp then, wasn't it? It was. Nice and weighted. I found it very easy to drive. So if Annabelle pans around now, you'll see this is quite a steep hill. You'll see, even slightly accelerating, we're still in the charge bar. So as long as I keep it in the efficiency range on that speedo type thing, we're all good. Yeah, the slower you go, you can hear it more. And then I accelerate and it dies down. 
as you've seen from most of our electric car antics, the amount of people that just don't hear is coming. 18, that's not bad. It's comfortable in here. Yeah, it's not the most refined vehicle in the world. I'd say the ZS is more comfortable. And the thing is, we were spoiled by a Genesis the week before, and that was like getting into... A baby Bentayga. Yeah. So these are a bit harder, but they're supportive, and this one's electric. Well, this one's six-way adjustable, isn't it? Yeah. It makes all the difference. Interestingly, though, the passengers is manual. I think one of the main things that appeals to me, and is slightly better than the ZS, is the fact is, you've got reach and rake adjustment. So this is slack head, and this is a perfect road to recoup. Is it's not the widest. So if I get up to a speed and then this is the car braking. Now eventually it will come all the way down to a creep, but it won't stop. 17 miles. Mm. Oh no, just gone back up to 18. So the recouping is working. <laughs> Biggest challenge I've got is having a lead foot. Of course you do then. Well, it pulls not to 60 and 7.3. The short range has now gone off sale. Mind you, it wasn't really short range per se. I mean, this was, this is, what, 35 miles more? Yeah, which isn't pretty much, yeah. That That's much not of a an increase. Up, yeah. yeah. It's not like the difference between the ZS EV and the ZS EV long range. No, no. Oh, no, that's noticeable. But the biggest benefit with this is you now get MG Pilot, so you've got that massive safety suite. And it does make sense to phase the other one out if this one's got the MG Pilot. Luminance level, your digital speedo, road sign recognition. At the top, you can see lane keep assist and adaptive cruise and speed limiter. That's the thing about this. It's a nice and easy cluster to read. You've got your speedo, which is analog on the left. And it's not a digital analog like a lot of new cars. It is oh. analog, analog. That beep there was lane departure warner. Warner, eh? What, Warner Brothers? <laughs> no, uh -huh. lane, lane departure Warner is obviously somebody or something. If you floor it from, say, standstill, you will just burn tyres for fun. There is wheel spinach. Got a smiley. Yay! <laughs> what are we on now? 17. And if anything, we're recouping more than using. The state car? Hmm. The state car? Electric state car. So we're here at Sue's Cumbria Snap now. And there's David. So what do you think of the MG5, David? This is a great little car, isn't it? Ooh, look at that Alpha. So this is a Roe model, so it's not actually MG. And if anything, it's got design standing that looks typically German. German estate car. But because it's got these conventional looks, it appeals to such a wider audience. I mean, you've got a car for just over 30 grand, which comes with MG Pilot and loads of other tech and now a 250 mile range, it just makes sense. It's not the most refined vehicle inside, but it is interesting. I mean, just look at that shifter. Leather wrapped steering wheel and some leatherette style seating. But the door cars, they finish nicely. Yeah, this is hard, but as I said, it's about 30 grand for an electric estate car. The premium on electrics and hybrids is pretty damn crazy. USBs in the back, decent room. Um, people were mentioning yesterday, what's going on with that drop in the floor? And yes, you can get an adjustable boot floor, but it doesn't lift it to this, so you're always still gonna have a bit of a boot lip. Your tire inflation kit, and that's a clever place to put a charger. And like every MG, you get a seven year warranty. It looks just like the short range one. Well, actually, there's two things that tell it apart, and that's the triangle at the top and that rectangle at the bottom, and that's part of the safety. Apart from that, that's it, literally. But to be honest, it didn't really need much of a change. We may as well just wait for the facelift. Now that is a thing of beauty, it really is. Right, we've just had our Bergenino, and we've got 16 miles of range, and to Kendall, it's probably seven or eight. So we should be all good. Wagons roll. Bye bye Millthorpe, thank you so much for the lovely burgers. Switch gear in here, all feels nice and solid. And I am a fan of a rotary for a selector. Yeah, they're not the most flamboyant buttons in the world, but they do the trick. As I say, they get the job done, don't they? Exactly. It is very 
very chill bar today, isn't it? Well, that's it. That'll also be affecting the range, won't it? It will. We're down to 15. We are going up a bit of a steep hill, though. I think the biggest thing I've noticed, Annabelle, about driving electric cars now, you know, right at the beginning, we'd be like, oh my word, we've got... 14 miles ah the range anxiety was a real thing though i was gonna it? say it, it it's gone now with us because we drive so many electric cars yeah also sport mode that's a bit of a killer in this at least when you change it into whichever mode it will say you've got so many miles in that mode blah, 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 blah. Yeah. what i like about mg is on their website when you're looking at the configurator it does give you a range of real world figures not just a, a bit of everything which you'll get about 250 miles but if you're looking at motorway driving that drops to what they would say is like 179 yeah. so it gives you a guide of what you're looking at which means you can then plan your journey yeah you know, well, that that's makes huge. sense i mean yeah. if you remember when you drove the zs in london oh that was just sheer bliss yeah well it, what was it a range of 163 but when you take it in a city it then increases to about 220 yeah and we, i was getting 260 but yeah. you know even i will need to nip at some point and, but it was, it was the most stress-free drive around London I have ever experienced in my life yeah. so far. So we're now back in normal, we've got regen 2. So it's not the heaviest regen, but it's just enough to, to recoup when you yeah. back off, yeah. So on the left-hand side we have Levens Hall. They do very nice cake there. They do, they have a chilli fest and you see lots oh, of... Oh, we haven't been to chilli fest in ages, We also have the grey lady that wanders up and down this. And I oh, saw it haunted. years and years ago. Yeah. Now, whether that was to do with... Hang on, is that the same grey lady that you find at Hogwarts? Does she come down here for a visit? So we have Barrett, Grange Over Sands, uh, Kendall and Vermeer. So, let's go into... Engage. Make sport it mode and, uh, yeah, okay. What it's done now, it's realised not got much range so it's it's throttling it back yes right? it's exactly it's done exactly that it's throttled us back so we can't go whooshing out no whooshinino for you today benjamin no no well not until we've charged anyway and so then that's I'm sure one that thing you do need to bear in mind it will throttle down for some reason it's throttled us down to 44 miles an hour and there we go i'm slowly getting over 45 Keep and now just to get on. it's giving me a little more power but that's, that's something to note. So if you're going up a steep hill and you've got a low range, it will throttle it down and then it will slowly give you it back. It's a pity it didn't example. give me a warning beforehand though, saying we are going to seriously limit your power because the Say At Me Electric did that, didn't it? It literally said, right, you're on your own now, mate. Good luck. <laughs> but that's the thing about this channel. We like to test things to their absolute limit. So when that says dash, 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 that's when I start thinking, ah. Mm -hmm. Have I bitten off more than I can chew? Well, this is what our road trips are all about, isn't it? Yeah. We go out, we do see. I mean, that, it is interesting just to see, taking it out at the beginning, with a range as low as it is. Yeah. And seeing how the car performs. Let's see if I can travel. Oh, look at that, an R129. So that is actually built on Dorothy's chassis. So 11 miles left. So it is depleting a little quicker at 55. It's when you get up to 70, that's when you really notice it. Bear in mind it's not the warmest day. It says it's 5 degrees, but with wind chill, it's got to be closer to zero. Oh, no, look! Figaro! Figaro! Lovely colour. It's now giving me a warning, basically saying, do not let this get much flatter, otherwise we are going to start limiting some of your safety. Basically, we just need a little voiceover going, if you don't take me to a charging station soon, we're going to have a problem. It's on efficiency now. If right. I back off there... Into that's charge. into charge yeah that's the thing about this on a decent road it's pretty damn well refined isn't it it is here a little bit of tire rumble but not much you can't hear much noise outside either no home of the mint cake the architecture is very interesting around here yeah it didn't wheel spin normally it would wheel spin there because <laughs> it does do a heck of a launch doesn't it bear claws wow bear claw monday Yes. Ah, Quiggins, Kendall Mint, yes. Ooh. Some of you down south won't know these. Which is a pity, because they're awesome. Looks like it's going to snow around here, Annabelle. It does look that kind of colour of sky, doesn't it? And they've salted it, so it must be a bit chillier here. Mm. So we left Silverdale with what, 17, 18? Yeah. 
Oh. So we did recoup a little, didn't we? Have they added two chargers? Ooh, this one they have. Two. So we've now got four Insta chargers. Well, that's a clever Insta idea. Insta chargers. Insta, Insta volts. volts. As we entered the car park, you probably saw the auto lights burst into life. We've also got high beam assist. Charging points out the front. Let's charge. I'm going to tap to commence charging with my smartphone. It's authorizing, and as soon as it's done that, I'm going to actually put this charge belt. Got the beep. Ready, press start. Yay! Charge card to air. I've heard a word this time, which I didn't have before. And a click on the Instavolt machine. Battery 10%. Let's have a look on the cluster. It shows you a little diagram that shows you that you're connected. It's charging 6% and you've got a little red treadmill type bar that will give you the actual miles of range. It's already up to 8%. So it's obviously running at around, let's say 50 to 60, meaning a full charge will take an hour and 27 minutes. So dependent on what the speed of the charger is, that will fluctuate. Now it's charging. It's time to go and have a wander around boots. Oh darn it! I've left the windows now. You hold down the lock button. Ta-da! Enjoy your respite, MG5. Mmm, plants. You got monkeys and and that's the elephant yard. Now it's time to stop. It tells you just to tap your card or your smartphone to end the charge. You've heard the beep and it's telling you it's finishing and it's swiping the card. The duration is showing on here, 38 minutes. We'll know for sure when we have a look. Yes. I'm going to put the buttons back in and I'm going to shut the lock. So how much does that cost us, Annabelle? £12.72. That's not bad, is it, for 100 miles? No, not at all. Now the other thing about electric cars is, depending on where you go to charge them, you might actually get complimentary charges. And then you've got lower rates when you're on your seven and a half kilowatt at home and things like that. It really depends on where you charge. Now interestingly, the short range and the long range still take 40 minutes. I find that quite random to be honest. Now we're back in the car, just run through some checks. You can see we've got 111 miles of range which is 57% of the battery. Okay, Annabelle selected Sport. Well, that's my preference. So we've got 105 in that, not bad. Go to Eco and that's 116 miles. Should we head to Hayes? I think we should. So we've got a reversing camera on this. That makes it really easy to get out of bays. One thing you don't get on this car on either trim is parking sensors on the front. But you do have them on the rear. As you'd expect, because this is like a market town, it's got some windy roads. And this is the epitome of windy roads. Yes, and they're narrow as well. Ah, and that's sport mode for you. <laughs> uh, Eco didn't last very long at all, did it, Benjamin? No. Let's go into adaptive. Just press this. And because it's got traffic jam assist, it'll follow the car in front. If you've got adaptive cruise control set and you go into a bend that's say like this, what it will do is slow down as you steer. Well, we can't be doing too badly because it was 105 when we left in, sports, in sport mode and it's already gone up to 108. Yeah, I don't get that because all we've done is climb hills. Oh well. I'll just whoosh a new knee from here. And that's 100% boost. Average 60. Whee! It is a rapid takeoff, isn't it? Yeah. And without it being throttled down, you can tell the difference. Yeah, you can. Well, that's the thing, isn't it, about an electric powertrain? There's just nothing holding you back. Unlike a turbo, there's just you can just literally put your foot down and. Yeah. Whew, you broke it off. That's why, if you're not careful, something like this from the lights will catch you off guard, as I will now demonstrate here. So we're going to head towards Amble's side, and I will pull out at the junction. And if I see that little kicky <laughs> but the thing is because it's the mg5 and it's got batteries in it's very heavy which means it stays stuck to the road like glue because they're a heavy car they feel extremely well planted at all times and that doesn't affect the acceleration in the slightest that's the thing in heavy winds these just they literally wobble around on their axis as opposed to being blown around and that's due to their weight once again yeah it just gives you that element of stability and control yeah it's very smooth actually oh they are 
That's the thing. Electric powertrains just offer something totally different. Now the comfort I mentioned with the suspension, it's a bit wallowy. Which it is. But the thing is, that makes it really comfortable for passengers. I mean a passenger's just sat in the back and you're going down these country roads and because you've got movement, you don't feel like you're in a racing car, even due to the weight. So I think that's a good compromise. Having driven it and now being a passenger, I do see what you mean, Ben. It's a comfortable seat. It's firmer than you would expect in some of the other cars, mm. but I don't think that's a bad thing. No, it's not. It keeps you upright. And for a long journey, I would find this quite comfortable. Well, it makes it supportive, doesn't it? Yeah. Great visibility. Not really a blind spot with this B pillar. And it's a decent sized windscreen. And the back window is not too small either. So we're traveling at 65 miles an hour. And the bottom line is if you travel at 70, you will deplete your range rather fast. But you kind of expect that, especially if you've got your tunes going and your aircon and all that. But a good compromise is say 60 to 65 miles an hour. Oh my word, Ben, that's a Rover 75 behind us. It is, and we're in a row A. Well, five. an MG, but it's still a row A. <laughs> wow. I know about three to four miles at say 70 miles an hour and giving it the odd blip we've used I think it's three to four percent so it does show that it does deplete far faster when you're flooring it this is what acceleration is like in an electric car and that's the other thing it is the old system I mean, we've seen the new system in the ZS EV and it's like lightning fast and far easier to use and it's got far more features. This does what it says on the tin. Gives you satellite navigation, DAB, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And that's about it. And it's not the fastest thing in the world either. Screen, which means no connectivity to the iSmart app. No. What you have to remember about this car is it's about 30 grand. You can get one closer to 28. That does include the grant, which yes, is still currently here at this moment in time. By the time you watch this, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. The ride. Well, it's comfortable, but it kind of makes sense. The biggest challenge with the first ZS, it was far too soft. So if you floored it due to its weight, the body on top would just go me. But this, no, it's comfortable. And if you throw it into a bend, you will feel body roll like a fair bit. But at the other end of the scale, it will not lose its composure. It'll just stick to the road like glue. Now, it started raining, so the likelihood is that will reduce our range because it's having to pump water out from the tyres. You couple together that with it's getting a bit colder now we're heading up the lakes and our range is down to 99 miles. Going to Eco, 103. Now it's quite interesting. You can feel it throttle down. So if you put your foot down, it doesn't do quite as much as it would do in normal or sport. But the one that you really notice it in is when you put it in sport mode, you feel like a fractional blip under your accelerator pedal. There are hills. Them there are hills. That is exactly where we took the last one. So we had the short range. But as you said, before we're going to take this up the struggle, we have taken other cars up there. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how well the MG5 copes. Well, oh, it's one heck of a road, isn't it? So this is Windermere. So 52%. Considering I've been playing, I've used about it's 5%, isn't it? I don't think that's bad. That's what, 11 miles? Like yeah. That. Not bad at all. No. Nah. Ooh, rain sensing wipers. Perfect. Yeah, I do like steering on this. It's light enough that you can do it with one hand, but it does weight in very nicely on the back road. And I think it also changes depending on which mode you're in. Don't quote me on that. Ooh, so that. Ooh, ooh! Shredded tyre then. Shredded tyre. I think I'd rather have shredded wheat. <laughs> now we've got roof bars on this, but they are decorative. That's a limit. Man, you've done this like four times now. You're going to zap up all the range, and we're going to have to charge again on the way That's an interesting out. thing. It's still saying 52%. So 93 miles range. Now the thing about the MG5 is it's agile. It's comfortable. And it can be economical. And you wouldn't expect this kind of thing to be engaging, but because of an electric powertrain and it's pure weight. It really is. Yeah, we can kind of fling it around. Or you could just potter it. It's just a lovely car to drive, isn't it? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, around the village is, you will literally not use mileage, as we proved last time. You know, you'll set off with 20 and you'll go back with 20. Lake Look, Windermere. Windermere. This is Ambleside. You will see one of the places that was featured on Forza Horizon. That's it. We will now see my reference to German and Swiss. <laughs> so that's Hayes. Is that it? Nope. Is that it? Nope. Is that it? Nope. There, there it is. is! Oh my word, they're working on it. Oh my word, we're going to be going up into the clouds. It is very mistoir up there, isn't it? Extremely. Coniston, Hawkshead, Langdale, and then Keswick and Grasmere. Will it be a struggle to find the struggle? <sighs> 51%, 102 miles. So we're not really using range now. Oh look, Kinema. Kinema. And that is called Zeffirelli's. A lot of outdoor shops, but random things. Well, it's a hiker's paradise here, isn't it? Yeah. Hiker's paradise. Yeah, the traffic in summer is ridiculous. Isn't it? Pedestrian is, detection yeah. and bike detection, haven't we? Yes. Thanks to MG Pilot. There we go. There is the glass house, or the house that's built on a rivery stream thing. Kirkston Pass. And yes, Smithy Brow that then goes into struggle. I'm going up someone's driveway. Yeah, so let's stop. There's some Nino. What mode are we in? Eco. You can tell that by the E there. Fabulous. And we've got... Oh look, it's not Switzerland but it is Sweden. I'm Inga from Sweden. All these yeah. things are trying to play into my little narrative. I'm asking the question, if you know what that film that is from, answers on a postcard. There's no way I'm trading. There's the struggle. struggle and it actually said the struggle winter conditions can be hazardous 20 percent so we've got 50 percent so we've we blipped one percent already eek so, it's not called a struggle for nothing is it no. i mean this is quite steep and it's there's just power there what we'll probably do is turn around at the top come back and see how much we can recoup on this journey i would yeah oh, that's interesting 94 miles and 48%. So we are using a percent or two. Whereas you wouldn't be using that on the flat ground. Look at that. And that's where I used a mountain bike many moons ago. Annabelle and I have also walked across there with the goom. Let's travel at 30. Still 48%. 92 miles range now. So it is having an effect. Those are the auto wipers, auto wipering. 89 miles, 47%. As we mentioned last time, it's quite easy to get a couple of sheep in the back of this as well. As far as the state cars go, there's everything you need. Get your hairpins out. Look at this. What a road. And if I floor it now, look at it. You can just put your foot down and zoom up here. Okay, that zapped a bit. But our ears are popping again. Forty-six <laughs> percent, eighty-five miles. So that's our benchmark, Annabelle. Let's see what we can gain going back down. Oh my word, it's windy! Look at his back. I know. That's the road that we used in the other one. Yeah, to get to the hard knock runners. Oh. Ah! Window up! Window up! Close oh, your window. Okay. Let's go then. So we're now going down the struggle. 83 miles, 45%. There it is, the Kirkstone Pass free house. Another well, place that's very ghostly. Yes. There's a low gear for half mile. Okay, first thing I've noticed is the regen is working to a point, but instead of scrubbing speed off, we're actually gathering it. So don't rely on it. To slow you down? No, not at all. It definitely helps. Because we are actually showing us in charging mode now, aren't we? Yeah. Unless you I'm, change something. Actually, on the way I, up. I am going to change it now because otherwise it is going to actually help us break. So. But you put it into Curse 3. So there you go, it's okay. in Curse 3. Yeah, and it's still overriding it. But due to its weight, you can just whee, fly around corners. So 46%, 83 miles. Still 46%, 84 miles. We're in the efficiency bar. Nope, back into the charge. 
sort of teetering between charge and efficiency. Think on this, if you're on level four, three, four, where did I get that from? <laughs> level three, the brake lights are on as well, aren't they, Annabelle? Yes. And we're just using Regen 3, so there's no acceleration, there's no brake. And we are quite firmly in the charge section. Yeah. 85 miles, 46%. A slight bit of acceleration, so we're still travelling at about 25 miles an hour. And now, completely off. Come on, we want 87 at least. See, this is getting quite steep and we're starting to accelerate quite hard. Yes, we are picking up speed. <laughs> there we go. Any advances on 87? 88. Excellent. Oh, we might make that 90. Tensions are high. And it's gone to 47 as well. Okay. Nicely spotted. So the percentage Anna. does go up. 89! Yes! Yay. Right, we're now retiring. That's it. 89. We're done. The Apple Pie Cafe. Ooh. Sorry. Ooh. Apple Pie. When I'm wearing sunglasses and uh, something about a tank being clean or something. Sort of <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Pizza. Oh, Go, pizza I goodness. It was a plate. Okay. Mamma mia. The Jewel so. Raven. The Jewel Raven. Fjol Raven. No, for Jewel. For Jewel. No, no, it's for Jewel. Yeah, for Jewel. Scandinavian type sound yeah. things here, isn't see, it? See, now you see the likeness with Germany, Switzerland, Toblerones. <laughs> it's time to turn haze. When we were coming down the hill, it was recouping and giving us an update and increasing the miles all the time. And then we've just driven two or three miles, no, probably about two miles from the struggle through Ambleside. So I was using the accelerator and there were pretty much no hills whatsoever. And interestingly, we've now got 91 miles of range and 47% of battery. And the cockpit, it's nice and straightforward. Got the center area, the build quality is nice and strong and the soft touches along the side. Simplicity to use the rotary dial to select gears, park in the center by pressing down, and then you've got your modes, so that's your driving modes. Curse, your levels of regen. This is the temperature for your air conditioning. And this is the fan speed. For 30 grand, I mean, you're getting a lot of car and a lot of tech, aren't you? USB's here. And as you can see, because of that, you can actually put in your smartphone, can't you? So we use Waze yeah. through that. We just we've... don't need it around here because we know the road so well. Yeah. I mean, this closes as well. The rest of it, pretty self-explanatory. Decent cup holders, electronic handbrake, and down here, you can operate your mirrors. You've got your start, I can't say engine, can I? Motor? Start motor stop button, let's call it that. We've got the electronic seat, so it's nice and comfortable. Supportive padded area on the door as well. Yeah, there's hard touches. It's very well done, to be honest. Yeah. And considering I've actually driven this a heck of a lot more than you have this past week, I've found it comfortable, easy to drive. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. I am a fan of this styling as well. Mm, tactile. Funky. Storage point and a nice wide armrest. Decent headroom, decent legroom. This is six way adjustable. You can even drop the height of the seat too. And I've got a footrest on the left hand side. And in terms of storage, we also have a glove cupboard. Let's have a look in the back. So yeah, hard touches there, but it's nice and comfortable. And you've got this padded area for your arm. It's not a bad door card this to be honest and just look at the leg room considering that seat's set for me at six foot three headroom absolutely no problem considering people think of this as a small estate car it really isn't i was about to say it's not at all is it? no in the back seat it's pretty good you've got a pull down armrest and two usbs welcome to ambleside haze and this is a model of what we were filming before it's time to enter the jungle it looks a bit bioshock we as well I know. Rapture. Ooh. Danielson. Xylophones. <gasps> fat cat fella's still hungry, man. <sighs> well, we are in Peter Rabbit land. It's a great estate car. Electric powertrain, seven years warranty, around 30 grand, or closer to 28 if you go for the Excite. And a decent range and an increase on the previous one. And now MG Pilot. To be honest, I don't quite know how to criticise this. I mean, yeah, it's got hard plastics and it's not the most radical looking car. It's very conventional, but a lot of people are after that. 
Composite suits so many applications, it really does.